This is a radio-controlled plane being launched only by electricity and magnets along an electromagnetic rail launcher, which is similar to modern aircraft carrier launch systems. Now I built a similar launcher a few years ago that was only able to fire paper planes and some small gliders. And this old launcher required some complex electronics to work. But I've got an idea to make it purely mechanical, which will hopefully make it simpler and more powerful. This video is sponsored by KiwiCo. More on them later. Okay, here is the first prototype. I've got these four magnets mounted to this rail. Uh, these first two magnets have matching pole directions and the second pair are flipped, so their pole direction goes the opposite way. This way, if I have some coils on a sled and apply some power to the coils, it should create an electromagnet that will repel the first two magnets and be attracted to the second pair of magnets. So let's place it in position and just short some wires across these coils. Oh wow, <laughs> that actually launched better than expected. So I've now mounted two metal strips either side of the rail and I've also made a new sled with these metal strips that hang off the rear uh, in the hope that these will make contact with the contacts on the rail and apply power to the coils. So let's slowly push them into the coils and see if it launches. What I love about this design is it's purely mechanically timed as the position and length of the strip can be adjusted to power on and off the coils at just the right time to accelerate the sled. But these contact strips aren't ideal as they need to be perfectly aligned to make good electrical contact with the strips on the rail. But I think I know a solution. I'm sure many of you have played with Scalextric cars before where they drive along a track with a thin metal strip down the center that applies power to the electric motor within the car via these very small brushes on the underside. Now these brushes work much better than the contact strips on my launcher because they conform to the track far better, making a good electrical contact. So I bought a pack of official scale electric brushes to test on the sled. Only one small issue, they can't be soldered as they just wick the solder along the brush and make it a solid piece. The easiest solution I could find for this was to use a metal strip folded over to create a custom crimp, which could then be soldered to, without the solder directly touching the brush. And with the brushes mounted to the sled, it works pretty well. I've been doing some more designing and built this. It's essentially the same as the first prototype, but has twice the number of magnets and four times the number of contacts. The reason why it has far more contacts is because it's wired to switch the polarity of the coils as it passes each pair of magnets, creating alternating current, which should cause it to attract and repel each magnet pair, creating four points of boost along this short section. I've also greatly simplified the sled with just a single coil in the center, which allows for a thinner rail, so the magnets can be closer together and the sled will be slightly lighter. Also, with the official Scalextric brushes costing £3.50 for this pack of six, which is only 18 centimetres worth of brushes, I found I could buy this solder wick, which is just braided copper ribbon that costs just £3.40 for 1.5 metres, so about one eighth the price per centimetre. And this new prototype is looking really promising. It's so cool watching this thing spark along the rail as it accelerates up to speed. However, I did notice some marks on the metal contacts. This isn't a huge issue as these strips are made from nickel, which has a far higher melting temperature than the copper brushes. So I think it's mostly molten copper depositing on them, but it would be nice to have the contacts replaceable on the final launcher. Also, launching the sled by just pushing it into the contacts isn't ideal as the repelling force on the first magnets is strong enough to bend the 3D print causing the brushes to disconnect and, well, some pretty bad sparking. So I'll need to make a high power switch to initiate the launch. For the final design, I printed the magnet mounts on the Formlabs Form 4, as it prints parts using a UV curable resin, which should be more rigid than the previous magnet mounts and hopefully prevent any flex that causes the brushes to disconnect. Plus the transparency looks really nice. Then I crimped some copper braid that can be soldered to the main power wires and bent into a C-shape to mount inside the brackets. The reason for this is to have the metal contact strips easily replaceable, so by bending them to a specific angle they can slot into the mount without the need for solder, making it easy to pop out and replace if they get damaged. The next step is to prepare the rail by drilling a bunch of holes along its length, 
which will let the wires pass through for the alternating polarity and I mounted a long copper bar to either side of the rail that will supply power to all the contacts. Then the magnet and contact bracket can be attached and soldered up. So now we have the positive bar on this side with the negative wires passing through the holes to the other copper bar on the other side. Then if we connect a power supply to one bar, push the sled into position and connect power to the other bar, the sled should launch. Which looks awesome in the dark. I now just need to repeat this design another 9 more times for a total of 80 magnets and 80 contacts to see how fast this thing will go. Which took about 6.5 hours and probably would have been quicker if I soldered directly to the contacts. But having the contacts replaceable will make it far easier in the future if it needs fixing. Then the parts can be mounted to the rail then soldered up and finally mounting the magnets with alternating north and south poles. Now all it needs is a high power switch to act as a trigger for firing the sled. I started printing the switch on my Prusa XL with its tool changing capabilities, which allows me to print flexible hinges, as I want this switch to have a spring loaded arm that can be cocked back to load the launcher. And this flexible hinge will act as the latch that will hold the switch open, meaning it only requires two prints and a few small components to complete. It just needs a slight adjustment to the design as this doesn't latch reliably. So this new design has the spring underneath to make it more compact and the latch now works perfectly. I then mounted it to the launcher and soldered up the contacts as well as printing a launch button. So with the sled on the rail it's ready to fire. But there's a problem. Watching the switch in slow motion reveals there is a lot of bounce due to the momentum of the arm when it hits the contacts, which might not seem like a big deal as it's barely visible to the human eye. But in terms of the sled acceleration, it almost completely skips the first few pairs of magnets and the sparks don't leave the switch contacts in good condition. I spent the next day or so trying different ideas to prevent this bounce, but nothing seemed to work until I remembered a switch I used in a previous project called a reed switch. This switch is essentially two metal contacts that are attracted together when a magnet is placed nearby. Now this tiny reed switch is only rated for half an amp, which is nowhere near enough for this launcher, but maybe I can make my own which could handle the current. This new switch has two metal strips that are separated by a very small gap, with a small magnet placed on top as well as a magnet on the arm. Then as the arm swings up, it pulls the two strips together, completing the circuit. And in slow motion, it's clear it bounces far less than the previous designs. So I modified it slightly to prevent the live metal strips from being exposed, as well as covering the copper bars that supply the power to the contacts. And now the launcher is complete. But before we launch some projectiles, let me tell you about a launcher that you can build with the sponsor of this video. KiwiCo is all about bringing fun learning to science and problem solving. As a long term fan of KiwiCo, their crates never fail to impress me. With easy to follow instructions and all the required parts, it's the perfect way to get started with a science project. I honestly wish I had one of these KiwiCo crates as a kid because they're an excellent combination between building and learning. With the included magazines explaining science concepts such as inertia through cartoon comics, and extra experiments you can do with household items. And they have a huge range of kits for all ages, so you can build anything from water bottle rockets to trebuchets. So if you haven't already tried a KiwiCo crate, then I highly recommend you go and check them out. And right now you can get 50% off your first month of their monthly subscription by using the code TOMSTANTON, or by going to kiwico.com forward slash TOMSTANTON. The link will be in the video description down below. Locked and ready to go. Slots in good. Okay. In three, two, one. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, look at just sparking all the way down. I think it's like. It's like it's got do, do, like, do, 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 it's got do, do. afterburners on. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Ooh, it took off at the perfect time. I, I know. I made it. <laughs> <laughs> you got the trim just right. Fire in a grape. In three, two, one. <laughs> Oh, that was a splat. Oh, that was a... Oh, oh, that is such yeah. a good splat. Great. Oh, good. It absorbed all the energy from the sled. Oh, the sled hit the rail. Oh, no. Is it is a, is a rail? Yeah, it looks okay. What about if you put three grapes in there? Oh. Multiple grapes, mate. In three, two, one. Triple grape. 
I got grape juice all over me. Oh, one didn't splat. Oh, one's on the top! <laughs> one's on the how? top! How did it end up there? What happened? Oh, wait. Oh, wait, so one got nailed. There's only one. Oh, the <laughs> rebound! There's no <laughs> the way. Douche. I can't believe I actually sliced it. Douche. The <laughs> what you doing, Tommy? Shooting hot dogs. <laughs> Two. One. <laughs> wow, oh no! It's, it's, it's like a worm. Right, we've got a. Uh, what, what would you call this? The bullet train sled. <laughs> yeah, the bullet train sled. Yeah. Loaded in. Two, one. Oh, bosh! That was travelling. Two, one. <laughs> <laughs> Now the launcher may be complete, but there's still some work to be done on the sled. So I built four new sleds, each with a different number of wire turns per coil, ranging from 100 turns to 400 turns, to see how this affects the speed. And to measure the speed accurately, I printed this tracking marker that can be mounted to each sled. Then once filmed in slow motion, I can import the footage into a video tracker software that will measure its speed along the length of the rail. I then repeated this test at 16 volts, 32 volts, and 48 volts. And aside from the sparks getting larger with the higher voltage, it's clear the 200 turn sled always wins the race. Now in theory, more turns of wire should create a stronger electromagnet, but what this doesn't take into account is the mass of each coil, as the 400 turn coil is far heavier than the 100 turn. So it's a fine balance between the strength of the electromagnet and the mass of the sled. However, we can use the tracking software to measure acceleration, and because we know the mass of each sled, we can use Newton's second law of motion, force equals mass times acceleration, to calculate the forward force produced by the magnets. And this reveals that the 400 turn sled produces the largest force, meaning that if all sleds were equal in mass, we'd have a clear winner. Also, more turns of wire results in higher resistance, and therefore the current passing through the coil is lower, which reduces the load on the thin copper brushes. As with the 100 turn sled, there is nearly 90 amps of current passing through the coil at 48 volts, which destroys the brushes. I then modified the sled so the brushes are replaceable, as they are clamped in position using a single bolt. Therefore, if they need replacing, I can simply loosen the bolt and solder on some new brushes. I was hoping this launcher would reach far higher velocities than my old launcher, as there aren't any sensitive electronics to limit the voltage. But with three times the input voltage, the fastest sled only reaches 44 miles per hour. Just four miles per hour faster than my old launcher. However, what this new design can handle is more current. Therefore, we can design a sled with multiple coils that will hopefully produce far higher magnetic forces for launching much heavier projectiles. So instead of launching paper planes and very lightweight 3D printed planes, let's try launching a fully radio controlled plane. This plane is one of the lightest radio control aircraft I own at just 138 grams, but it will still be the heaviest thing I've launched using magnets. And with the 400 turn sled producing a forward force of 6.7 newtons, two coils should in theory be enough to get this plane up to around nine meters per second, which should be plenty of speed to get it airborne. So I created a 3D CAD model of the plane's fuselage in Onshape, which is a cloud-based CAD program. And this allows me to easily design a mount that should hold it to the sled. If you want to design similar projects, I highly recommend checking out Onshape. Then the model can be exported and 3D printed, which fits the plane perfectly. Oh, that fits perfectly. So with the new double coil sled all ready to test, I thought I should probably run a quick test with a dummy weight just to test my calculations. Three, two, one. <laughs> that should do it. So I headed out to the local park the next day to hopefully do some flying. The total mass of the plane and sled is 220 grams and reaches a speed of 10.2 meters per second or 22.8 miles per hour in a tenth of a second, which is surprisingly faster than my estimation.
It may not be the most practical method of launching a model aircraft, but in my opinion, it's one of the coolest. Thanks for watching.